disappointment. New York Times bestselling author and president of Proverbs 31 Ministries, Lisa Turkhurst, has recently faced some of the most difficult years of her life. We've all experienced our fair share of things not turning out the way that we thought they would. So what do we do about it? In her book, It's Not Supposed to Be This Way, Lisa shares how God was with her during her darkest moments, how she survived, and how you can too. Lisa Turkhurst is joining us now. And Lisa, we welcome you back to the show. You. You've been through so much in the last couple of years, but after 25 years of marriage, let's start with that, you, you discovered something that really shattered your heart, your dreams, your vision of what your life was supposed to be. Share that. Yes, well, I found out my husband was being unfaithful, and that's definitely not something I ever thought we would face. Mm -hmm. um, and so not only did I feel devastated personally, um, but I was also just desperate to know what to do in my position at yeah. Proverbs 31 Ministry. It just all felt impossibly complicated. And at the same time, probably the deepest grief of all was I wondered if this would be the unraveling of the Christian mm. legacy that we would built into our five children. Yeah. So it was very hard. 2016 was that year of extreme highs and extreme lows. Not only was I walking through this with my husband, but three of our five kids got married that year. Oh my word. So it was- it One was, marriage in a year is stressful. Exactly. Yeah. But um, one thing that God had instilled in my heart in January of 2016, before I found out what was happening with my husband in February, I'd had a time, an intense time of prayer and fasting. And I'm not a fasting girl, trust me. I don't want you <laughs> messing with my food, right? But, um, but the Lord had really instilled in me some intense time with him. And what came out of that was, Lisa, trust my timing and love your husband. And so... Three weeks later, I found out what was happening with Art, and chaos ensued because of the emotional devastation was so deep. But I was so grateful I didn't have to try to find God's voice yeah. in the midst of that. Mm -hmm. I just went back to the last time I clearly heard God speak, and I just knew that the Lord was going to direct me. Um, but the tears were immense, and the grief was deep. Yeah. Uh, how did you begin the move forward from there? Because you, it wasn't just that. But before we, before we answer that, talk a little bit about what happened to you health-wise during that year. Right. So in June of that year, I kept telling all my friends that I felt like my insides were twisted up because mm -hmm. the grief was so immense because of the emotional devastation. But literally, that was happening to me. I was rushed to the hospital. I, um, the doctor started running tests. I was in so much pain, they admitted me to the hospital. And um, the doctors kept running tests and kept saying they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. So that was on a Monday. And so I laid there in pain, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday morning, a surgeon came in my room. He said, we ran one last test and we know what's happening, your colon is ripped away from the abdominal wall, twisted around itself, cut the blood flow off. And had God answered your prayer to take away the pain, you would have gone home, your colon would have ruptured, and you would have wow. died. Wow. And it was in that moment I recognized God loves us too much to answer our prayer at any other time than the right time and in any other way than the right way. They rushed me into surgery. They removed most of my colon. They saved my life. But I had a different view of God walking through not just physical pain, but emotional pain. I knew we serve a good God who allows hurt, but we also serve a good God who allows hurt, but who will use that hurt for good, even if we can't see what that good is. And sometimes we, I mean, your story is almost like Job's, just when you think this can't possibly get worse. Yes. Then you get a breast cancer diagnosis. Yes. I mean, at that point, Lisa, did you not just wonder what in the world is going on in my life and my world? Of course I did. How did you handle that? Well, you know, in those first initial moments of shock, my feelings wanted to run ahead of my faith. Mm -hmm. And I had those questions everyone has when sure. you go through difficult times. Why me? Why this? Why now? Where are you? And yeah. where are you, God? Um, but I, I think as I was driving home from that diagnosis, I had an honest conversation with God. I said, <laughs> God, you know, people already know what I'm walking through um, with my marriage and with my other health issues. So they're going to be really upset. 
and you need to give me some answers because I don't even know what to say to people mm -hmm. and I'm really upset <laughs> and uh, I, I want to know like yeah. I want to know why is all of this happening and what are you doing with this mm -hmm. but you know Terry God doesn't want to be explained away yeah. he just wants to be invited in yeah. and I still don't know why all of this happened. I may never have those answers. None of us may ever have the answers that we're looking for, but what I do know is God has not cursed me with this. Mm -hmm. He has entrusted me with this, with this season of devastation. And I am determined to walk toward a God who can use it for good. And so I don't know the answers, but I know my God is trustworthy. You know, people, everywhere go through difficulties, some more than others, but you were in a position with your Proverbs 31 ministry mm -hmm. where people were already watching you. Mm -hmm. Now God really entrusted this season of devastation, if you will, <clears throat> of being shattered to you as you walk this out for other people to see. I mean, you're a communicator, you're a teacher, mm -hmm. you have the word of God alive in you. I believe that God allowed this so that you could light a candle in the midst of darkness for other people. I pray that that is true. But you know, one thing as I was writing one day in my journal, and I, I often will hear from the Lord, like I'll be writing something and all of a sudden what I've written is really God's mm -hmm. message to me. Yeah. And um, people have often said, Lisa, I think you've walked through this because you're in ministry. And one day in my journal, what came out is no, Lisa, God placed you in ministry all those years ago because he knew you'd walk through this. Mm -hmm. And so what a good thing that God has done for me personally all these years to have been surrounded by faith filled people, good teaching, and to have personally let all of these truths be in me so that they could come out of me. So I think it's both well, for when, me and for them. When the little boy sacrificed his lunch, mm -hmm. God broke it and fed the multitudes. Yeah, that's what he's doing with your story, stories. Well, the book is called, It's Not Supposed to Be This Way. If you're going through a difficult time, a struggle, Figure out how to get back to God. This book will give you the direction for all of that. It's really a wonderful read. Thank you so much for sharing with us.